Hello, hello everyone, and now welcome, welcome to a game. Only two days left on my pro account, really. Oh, okay. We'll see, we'll see how things go. Uh, extensions, audio mixer, everything looks good. And, well, I am already am recording, so let's just go ahead and get started. 2v2 matchup today for you guys, and what happened to... Ah, uh, sorry. W3 booster just shut down because I closed it. All right, let's uh, go ahead and load it back up for everyone. This is going to be a 2v2 matchup. And, well, the game is going to be Kwai and SDMK versus Godfather and Eucalyptus. Or Lubber playing as Eucalyptus. Kwai and SDMK. Let me change the ally colors here so it's a little bit easier to keep track of all of the action. It is going to be red versus green on this map here. Good luck. Um, hey, Metaphysics, thank you for tuning in. Um, and Night Elf bringing the green wherever it goes. A little bit of grass growing in the middle of autumn since, well, that's what the Night Elf trees look like. This is going to be a Night Elf versus Undead of going up against a double Undead army. Double Undead does have a lot of, well, very, very scary propositions as you can go double Death Knight, double Lich, and all of a sudden you have so much hero nuking power between the two. Um, Undead probably one of the scarier races for that to happen to as Night Elf heroes will end up getting taken down very, very quickly. The Undead heroes, well, they do not have to worry about getting double, double blasted with Death Coils since they themselves are kind of immune to it. That'd be interesting if you actually saw a Pit Lord or a Dark Ranger first coming from the Night Elf army um, to try and counteract that in, say, a 2v2 undead matchup. But then again, you don't even know what type of heroes the undead will be going for. They may be going for Death Knight and then Lich and then going for Lich again. So you just have double Liches to deal with. And with all of that said and done, well, it's going to be a Dreadlord first. All right, so Dreadlord first coming in from one of the undeads. Um, what, Lubber? Meanwhile, Eucalyptus going for that Death Knight. So Death Knight, uh, Dr Death Knight, uh, Dreadlord combination here. Dreadlord, a little bit of an odd opening. I haven't seen it used all that much as of late. Um, yes, it is very, very, it is very useful. But at the same time, in the same breath, I've only seen it really used in 1v1 matchups as we're going to be looking at an Acolyte while trying to get in some damage. Ents now joining in on the fight. Acolyte here perhaps trying to try and get in that last shot off there. Are they going to be able to get off that final kill? That is that question. As this Ogre Muller could end up getting taken down. Who's going to get the experience? It looks like the Keeper of the Grove does in fact get it. Picks up the Rune Bracers. And well, that's one way to avoid a large amount of damage. Ancient of War taking a lot more damage than it would like. And it gets taken down. The Forest Troll Berserkers and all of those other units. That Ogre Magi with that Bloodlust able to deal large amounts of damage. And burst that down quickly. Keeper of the Grove. And um, well, gonna be ready to go. And well, we'll be holding on to those rune bracers. You can take a look. The Keeper of the Grove finally gets the level 2 Tome of Intelligence, finally being left behind here. And this creep camp a little bit more difficult than, well, SDMK may have originally predicted. It's losing an Ancient of War does pick up Rune Bracers, but at what cost here? As he, well, is now down a production building and being forced to retrain another Ancient of War. Death Knight Crypt Fiends are making its rounds out as well. You can see some skeletal minions are out and about. Um, Kwai, the undead player um, on this team here, um, well, choosing to make some moves as the Keeper of the Grove is going to be going to go, gonna go ahead and engage with some of these Ents. Probably sleep to focus and surround, and Heroes Carry On Swarm can also be useful as a nu hero nuking ability here, as both sides looking to set up expansions. Both sides setting up expansions down here. You can see a Ziggurat now being placed down. This Null Overseer will give that Dreadlord level 2. Meanwhile, the Death Knight of Lubber, not too far away, going to go ahead and clear out the remaining creep camp here as well. Expansions should be coming down in here momentarily. I don't see a Wisp making... Oh, nope, I take it back. A Wisp now making its way over. And it looks like it is going to be a Tree of Life being set up here. And, well, trying to get that economy going. Back on the bottom left-hand side, we are looking at, well, we're looking at Godfather setting up the expansion. Meanwhile, Eucalyptus or Lubber um, off over here. He's the one with the Death Knight as he's teching the Tier 2. 
Uh, right, we are going after this center creep camp as well at the Goblin Merchant Shop, the high level creep camp here. It looks like, well, I don't believe any of these heroes will get to level 3, only an Ogre Magi and a Forest Troll Berserker left. As we're looking at the Death Knight and, well, the Dreadlord going their separate ways. Both sides are looking to get in a large amount of damage. Keeper the Grove looking to purposely back away, acting as a little bit of a scout. Could end up getting slept here, but no. Keeper the Grove able to run back. There is the sleep, and this could be a problem. Crypt Fiends are now coming back the other side here. A large amount of damage. There goes an Entangle. There goes another sleep, and a Ghoul easily going to get taken down. As the Keeper of the Grove going to try and break free. Are we going to see a Death Coil? Yes, we are. And the Keeper of the Grove easily going to get bursted down with that Carry-On Swarm. A lot of easy damage damage right there as we now see another sleep all right sleep coupled with um well how did he make, break its way through not quite sure how he did that it looked like he just pushed himself through perhaps with some new skeletal minions no that wasn't the case i don't know how the death knight actually was able to get out of that well strange strange predicament Dreadlord does get up to level 3. Death Knight um, should be able to get to level 3 if that other Dreadlord does back away. And it looks like, well, it looks like Eucalyptus or Lubber and Godfather are working well together. Saying, back up, back up. I need just a little bit more experience to get to level 3. 2v2 matchups. The action is always fast and furious. Tree of Life nearly com em, coming online. Godfather already haunting this gold mine now going to be transferring some units over from the necropolis start saturating this gold mine meanwhile this tree of life still has quite a ways to go to start finishing entangling this gold mine here as the archers well uh, make a pin cushion out of that dreadlord a little bit of scouting going around pretty much everywhere on the map right now is my sound not working I don't know, you guys. Nope. Sound is there. It's just really, really quiet. All right. Is it a little bit less hot today? It is a little bit less hot. Um, it, you know, it's, I, I think it's actually like 22 or 20, 22 to 24 Celsius, somewhere in there. Um, but, you know, it is at 630 in the morning, so... It, it will get quite warm again. Undead music, just really quiet. All right. Crypt Fiends now pushing back to the other side. Another little bit of a push back and forth. Keeper of the Grove is out onto the field going after that Dreadlord. Dreadlord has a, will have a very easy time just wandering around here as the Keeper of the Grove getting in some of that damage. Why does the Keeper of the Grove attack with some sort of like falcon bird unknown? Panda now out onto the field though with that Breath of Fire should be able to make short work of any of those ghouls as we are now looking as at a Lich coming up as the second hero from Lubber. Lubber with that Lich. No big surprises there. What is going to be the hero coming in from... Um, um, coming in from Godfather, that is going to be the next important question as the Necropolis just now finishes training to Halls of the Dead. There we go. What is the hero going to be? Um, apparently, he's still not training up a, a second hero just quite yet. All right, coming back off to the north, Panda gets up to level two archers. Well, nearby, both sides just staying in their relative neck of the woods so far as we are getting up a slaughterhouse by um, Godfather. We do have slaughterhouses on both sides. So slaughterhouses, we could go into destroyers and obsidian statues here in just a moment. And still, um, well, Temple of the Dam, so it could turn into some sort of Necro Wagon strategy. Lich does have a large amount of mana. Are we going to perhaps see a little bit of burst damage come down across both sides? Both sides are here. There's a sleep onto the Lich. Lich is sleeping on the job and will pay for it dearly as it takes large amounts of damage. How did it break free from there? I don't know, but the Death Coil is not going to be in time. Dreadlord gets a sleep off onto the Lich as well as more damage going to be added on through, um, leaving that Lich behind to die um, as the death knight wants to get in a little bit of damage no easy way to stop that dreadlord now that the oh there's a burrow so beautifully done once more as we are going to see more fighting quick quick a dryad gets taken down carry on swarm coming in from the other side beautiful one two punches uh, from multiple locations and what is going on all of a sudden eucalyptus decides uh, or lubbards decided to back away leaving godfather in a rather unfortunate location all right he's going to continue to try and make its way back he got to sleep off onto that Keeper of the Grove will be forced to use a scroll of Town Portal. I don't know why he waited. Um, 
once the keeper of the grove was well free from that entangle and was with it or getting within range, he should have used that scroll of town portal immediately. It really felt like a little bit of miscommunication there. Lubber um, could have stuck around in that battle and w would have been fine for all intent and purposes. Instead, well, they spent a little bit of time chasing this, chasing the Dreadlord of Godfather. But at the same, in the same way though, um, well, Lubber was able to move out with this Lich and was able to do a little bit of creeping away from all of the action. As far as Lubber and Godfather play from the same house. All right, so, um, well, I, I don't know if that was a calculated move to try and go after creep camps while, um, while pulling... Um, pulling a little bit of attention away. There are a large amount of a large amount of ghouls. We are going into the meat wagons as we are going into necromancers, and the meat wagons gonna go ahead and just harvest some of these um, some of these additional skeletons. As you can take a look, he's gonna go ahead and collect them. So the graveyards producing those skeletons very very nicely back down over here on the other side keeper of the grove and the panda clearing up the rock golem and ogre warrior creep camps that will get cleared up nicely as the red team is trying to get a very strong econ or a very strong advantage in terms of experience my apologies for the color difference for some team for some reason the red team in the in in what w3 booster is actually the um, the wrong color team out on the map so you'll have to swap them if you are a little bit confused anyways in comes a try here or coming in from Kwai Kwai well pushing in with all with uh, what death knight crypt lord and lich this is a 3-1-1 keeper of the grove is right there as well with the entangles and um, so the slaughterhouse could get shut down here in just a moment going a necro wagon against Undead is generally not a very, very strong strategy as the Obsidian statues turning into destroyers not only counter the Necromancers, they also cancel out, cancel out the Meat Wagons since they are slow moving targets that have heavy damage. Breath of Fire being cast across here as Kwa is just pushing a large amount of damage. Meanwhile, we're looking at uh, well, Lubber, where are they going to be going next? And as we're seeing that 4-3-2, they have a major hero advantage and still pushing through a large amount of damage. Ghouls are now looking to back away, and we are looking at the main army of Eucalyptus, or Lubber, now pushing on inside, perhaps getting some damage onto that Tree of Eternity. Scroll of Town Turtle quickly being used. Are they going to be able to get back out in time? It looks like they will be able to do exactly that. The, the building positioning a little bit clumsy as we see a big impale go down across all of those units as they all stand in a single file line. All right, um, Lubbers, Lubbers, Crypt Lord getting in some a good impale right there, is shutting down many of those units. We're looking at more units trying to back away once more, and Eucalyptus will be looking to back up once more. There is a breath of fire, death of coil does save, and all of the units do end up backing off. Meanwhile, the Green Army. Um, Godfather making its rounds known as well. Going to try and put some pressure off on this expansion here. We do see some Necropolis training, Tome of Agility, and well, in comes some Ziggurats once more. Are we, where are the meat wagons? Um, there are the meat wagons right now, and they should be unloading here in just a moment. And here we are. All of the units are going to be backing up here. There is that army, and here comes the engagement. So much damage. Destroyers are already here, ready to go. There's that Devour Magic. They are enjoying this battle very, very nicely as we should be seeing more and more Devour Magic being used on all of those Skeletal Minions and Mages. Um, all right, as long as we see the Skeletal Mages perhaps focusing down all of those units, there's another Devour Magic once more. Destroyers pretty much back up to full health and this battle went as well as I thought it would for the team trying to push with um, Destroyers or push with uh, Necromancers and meat wagons going up against destroyers that obviously just will not go well as a couple of these well the ziggurat is going to be completed right there all right back on the other side another hit and run tactic being used once more wisps are getting in some detonation there is an impale there's a death coil trying to save a little bit more we are going to go ahead and see the another wisp get taken down uh, is this tree of eternity going to fall it looks like it could perhaps fall here in just a moment there is an impale scroll of town portal trying to head back out and sdmk 
uh, able to save his tree of eternity as a couple of wisps still need to be repaired coming back to the other side though necromancers joining in on the fight dryads are there with all of that uh well um, abolish magic removing those skeletal minions and mages but that damage is still adding up rather heavily as the dreadlord leading the charge here another carry on swarm there is a roar breath of fire across multiple uh, necromancers here as the necromancers are actually actually taking a large amount of damage meat wagon starting to finish off some of those dryads here this is actually going to be interesting if you can actually finish off multiple dryads um that could be interesting um, or could could end up giving a little bit of the advantage as we see another meat wagon just pretty much instantaneously destroyed by destroyers those destroyers living up to their name that magic damage dealing bonus damage to that heavy armor and well as long as you are fighting um fighting away from those destroyers maybe that necromancer necro wagon strategy does stand a chance all right pushing forward once more we're gonna look a little bit more at the damage getting added in once again as the tree of eternity gonna go ahead and use a scroll of town portal to try and escape again crypt fiends where are they gonna land there they go there's an impale as they are all clumped together not no real um no real ways to um, finish off these destroyers easily a couple of webs to bring them down but those destroyers still going after those obsidian statues and other units. So far, it looks like um, the red undead army is just constantly using scroll of town portal after scroll of town portal to defend multiple locations as the undead army is needs to be in multiple places at once. I can already imagine it on the mini-map. In comes the Necro Wagon strategy to try and put pressure onto that expansion down to the south again. But no Scroll of Town Portal being used quite yet by um, by Lubber. I'm a little surprised by this as the Lich is now looking to back away. More damage getting added back through once more as the Death Knight gets up to level 5. All right, it looks like the Red Army um, of Kwai has just taken a little bit too much damage as the dreadlord now makes its way over and gets a sleep off onto that lich all right lich is asleep at the wheel there's a sleep on the death knight as well and both units taking so much damage panda now making its way over breath of fire drunken haste death knight with a what a potion of lesser invulnerability trying to save multiple units strides now making their way back over again death coil saving another crypt fiend and those are just taking large amounts of damage will end up falling as well all right, green versus red, both sides. Dust of Appearance trying to well, reveal up those burrowed Crypt Fiends as Eucalyptus is going to be forced to back up again here. And in, well, down and away they go. No pressure being brought down here as there is a break in the action. Relentless pressure um, on both sides. You're looking at, well, three Necromancers, Obsidian Statue, perhaps on the move once more. Death Knight sitting at level 4, level 2, level 2 on those heroes, on the undead heroes of the Red Army. Meanwhile, level 4, level 3, for almost level 4 for the Night Elf. Coming back for, well, it, coming back for Eucalyptus, or Lubber, sorry. Lubber, we're looking at 4, 3, I believe the Death Knight is 5. And, well, the Dreadlord is a solo level 4, and we may perhaps see Infernal um, if the game does go long enough, since he is at level 4 with a solo hero at this stage in the game. All right, multiple expansions everywhere, every which way. Crypt Lord, Lich, Death Knight purposely backing away from the action. Uh, Destroyers should really be fighting, though. Not quite sure why they're not engaging against those Ogre Warriors. Um, that That's helpful. Um, yeah. Yeah, there you go. The rest of the units finally making their way over. And it looked like that Crypt Lord just took some unnecessary damage. It looks as though we're going to be clearing out the Granite Golem Creep Camps here. Granite Golem Creep Camps, 966 Creep Camp. Very difficult to take out normally. Obsidian Statue is going to be working overtime. Death Knight going to get off a Death Coil there to heal up that Crypt Lord. Crypt Lord does even have, well does even have evasion and the spiked carapace to try and get a little bit more armor and you can still see how much damage that chaos damage granite golem is doing right there level three now on the crypt lord we are looking at war song battle drums talk about a powerful item in a 2v2 matchup giving everything a 10 percent damage upgrade all right mountain giants are here once more we do have fairy dragons there to perhaps try and take down some of those destroyers sdmk being forced to hold the line here where is the rest of the uh, where is the rest of his undead friends as there they are showing up to the party a little bit in the back and we are getting into an engagement here destroyers could be trying to devour magic as well meat wagons 
spreading all of that disease cloud along the back line as those dryads are going to end up getting taken down very quickly. A major impale coming across on the south side here, stunning many of those units as Kwai is going to be here to just constantly try and shut down any bit of this or a lot of that damage. Another round of Devour Magic coming across here. Those destroyers able to stay alive and keep topped out on mana, but they are getting focused down rather heavily, and you got to be careful there as the destroyers want to use as much of that attack as they possibly can. All right, down to 400 hit points. It is still dropping rather fast, still doing large amounts of damage. There's another Devour Magic keeping everything alive as the Lich falls at level 4. Green Lich falls at level 4, another Breath of Fire, and there is so much death and damage across multiple units as that Red Lich gets taken down. All right, Squirrel of Town Portal try finally trying to back away as there is, um, well, a remainder of all of these Sailor Mages just getting um, left behind here. And who's going to end up winning out on that fight? Red end up losing the Lich here. So 5-4-3. Uh, um, 5-4-3. Kwai losing his Lich. That will be perhaps resurrected back at home. There it goes. Meanwhile, a lone meat wagon putting and leaving pressure here, causing a bit of damage and also getting disease cloud onto a lot of those units. All right, more damage adding in once more. We're going to see all of the units rotate back. We need to see some new obsidian statues by Lubber um, to heal up all of these units. You can see them two in the back right there, but the army is still, well, ra rather in the yellow and red zones. All right, Dreadlord looking to retreat back here. There is one destroyer going after pretty much a free meat wagon. One more shot right there. Nope, there comes a Crypt Fiend. Meat wagon down to seven hit points ends up staying alive. It needs to be repaired. Nothing like Unholy Aura making even your, uh, well, extending the life of all your mechanical units. All right. We're going to look. Crypt Lord and Death Knight making its rounds out as well. Solo Dreadlord sitting at level 5. Low hit point Meat Wagon. Yep, you can see that Unholy Aura really making a, a quite a big of a difference. That, that Meat Wagon was down to 7 hit points at one point. Now, all the way back up to 30. Well, back up to 36. Um, four to five times as much hit points as this, well, Necropolis is just going to end up getting taken down so fast because of this meat wagon pressure. Meanwhile, it is a trading of the expansions, as you can see. Um, well, we're going to have um, SDMK putting pressure onto Lubber's own expansion as well. All right, Scroll of Town Portal heading back. The Scroll of Town Portal heading back. There you go. How much damage? And it looks like the Necropolis is still going to get taken down as they get carried away. Kwai did try to unsummon this Haunted Gold Mine. Will be able to do exactly that. And now may want to resummon it as, yep, going to go ahead and resummon it in order to, well, get to this base up and running once more. Eucalyptus having no easy way to transfer Acolytes off over here. All of the gold mines on the map now pretty much taken as we're looking at, well, the meat wagons with the potential to do a very large amount of damage to buildings. These meat wagons are very high in damage indeed. They're just going to be mosey on over as we're still looking to see who has the larger army and who's going to be able to put push out through this battle. All right, in come some skeletal mages. Uh, fairy dragons, destroyers are nearby. They want to get in some devour magic. Crypt fiends are in position as well. Lich is at level four, very close to level five. Maybe able to get off some big uh, um, frost novas here in just a second. Look at this. 13, or what? 14 armor crypt lord. That 14 armor crypt lord going to be nearly impossible to take down as any melee attacks also slow down the attackers. Here you are. There's a major impale coming across the side right there more damage coming back on through as the obsidian statues are actually getting mana flared quite a bit they need to back up here as the fairy dragons are really working their magic all right in comes some large detonation a whole bunch of very low hit point crypt fiends are we going to see a breath of fire come back around and finish off those crypt fiends no we are not and those, so many of those crypt fiends were absolutely low there you go there goes one crypt fiend there goes another and it may, may actually be burned to death Nope, final attack right there. More damage pushing on through. Both sides trying to save some of the same of their units. And red units galore. How do you even focus all of the action going on in this battle as the Death Knight actually uses Ray's um, <laughs> Animate Dead? Dreadlord falls at level 6. And Ray's Dead and now being brought in. So you see a large number of Crypt Fiends currently out onto the field. They are in vulnerable units. 29 to 49 damage. 
And this is the day an animate dead is actually used. All right, useful in a 2v2 battle where there are corpses galore. Um, as we are, uh, now actually see some druids of the claw also wandering around, but that's a little bit of a misnomer as you cannot use any of their abilities. And well, they are in dru druid form. <laughs> So I, I guess that is another reason to not have um, not have um, um, raised undead. Perhaps crypt fiends would have been better, or if a mountain giant had actually been um, felled as well. Destroyer is still pushing around. We are looking at level six crypt lord doesn't have enough mana um, for locust swarm. Units are still battling left and right as the well more units are still pushing on through. There's a potion of lesser invulnerability saving that lich. Lich could get up to level six here in just a moment. Damage is just adding up pretty much every which way. Destroyer was about to get taken down. Lich is right there. Could easily just focus it down. There it goes. Lich, however, still just shy of level six again as the Death Knight of Kwai gets to level six. All right, good to Frost Nova on to the Death Knight. Death Knight has a potion of lesser invulnerability. Dreadlord has fallen at level six again. Death Knight Death Coils the Crypt Lord, and it is saved with a 300 hip or 600 hit point heal. All right, this game is absolutely going sideways. The heroes are leveling up so quickly now that they are constantly getting resurrected, taken out of the action, only to be brought back in and killed once more. All right, this. Crypt Lord, it looks like it's not going to be able to escape. Death Knight tries to transfer the Scroll of Town Portal and does so. Meanwhile, the Death Knight now needs to back away. Oh, he gets a little bit too far and now needs to head back home the old-fashioned way. All right. Ancient of Wind getting taken down as well. Tree of Eternity, main gold mines nearly mined out. Druid of the Claw trying to hide in the very back as the Tree of Eternity is showing 25 over 70 supply. One Druid of the Claw... Well, even going into, into bear form would be extremely helpful, would have additional bit of hit points as the Night Elf main base is about to fall. All right, Wisp now make their way back over. The Druid of the Claw pretty much trying to hide and say, you know what, maybe they won't actually check me out. And no, not able to do that as the Druid of the Claw ends up getting taken down. Uh, Death Knight sitting at level 6, almost at level 7. Crypt Lord sitting at level 6. Lich sitting at level 6. These are all lubbers, heroes. 6-6-6 six, six, six coming in from the undead army, finishing off all of these remaining buildings. All right, undead base uh, training up some additional abominations. Double undead is very powerful. And, and the problem right now, though, is that, that the double undead strategy going up against Night Elf, it works because of, there is a significant number of advantages. However, uh, the Necromancer, the Necro Wagon strategy is not going to work out nearly as well. And on top of that, the Disease Cloud is not going to work out as well onto those other units. We're going to look at the Panda getting taken down here, Tree of Life taking quite a bit of damage. And this Tree of Life will end up getting taken out. Are we going to see some detonations yes we are removing some of that precious mana as well all right gold mines on the map um, very much running running out only 10 minutes of mining left here this gold mine has 10 minutes of mining the main gold mines are completely gone and this gold mine only has 430 gold left this gold mine only has a thousand gold left but it feels like lubber wants to get um, that bit of gold as well as we as we may actually see limited resources on this map this is one of those situations where you probably wish you had well you probably wish you had a goblin alchemist as one of your heroes at this stage in the game able to just constantly uh, yeah able to constantly just get more and more gold meat wagons pushing on through destroyers are moving out once again obsidian statues are here destroyers here we go getting in for some of that pressure and the meat wagons taking in a lot of that damage as those destroyers try to rain them down or but well raining down is an infernal stunning many of the backline units there dreadlord could be in trouble he's trying to back away is he going to get a death coil to try and stay alive it looks like he'll be do able to stay do exactly that meanwhile the infernal is getting in large amounts of damage again as the uh, well the ends joining in on the fight as well destroyers there's an uh, well raise animate dead again three three upgraded units so many crypt fiends are out as the school of town portal now being used by godfather in order to get away and there they go all of those units are away now we are looking at well the remaining units trying to make 
make their way out. And not only do we see Raze un Animate Dead on one side of the map, we actually see Animate Dead on multiple sides. All right, level six now onto that Keeper of the Grove. And I, well, SDMK now with Tranquility, um, this could change things. Tranquility is an imp in uh, incredible, incredible. Um, ability as long as your army is still large yes the night elf army is very very small right now i believe there is only one keeper of the grove left right here but he's able to heal up much of the undead army who well is currently only sitting at 48 supply meanwhile back down to the south here infernal and all of the summons well making their way across to try and shut down this exp um, this particular base 49 to 60 damage that is chaos damage and finishing off many of those units as many of those units well in one or two blows the nerubian tower however is causing a bit of slowing right here as we're gonna look at well some abolished magics once more all right godfather with that infernal just constantly putting in more pressure it looks as though well the infernal is immune to magic so the destroyers do absolutely nothing as the Death Knight, Crypt Lord, and Lich are ready to make their rounds out again. Destroyers, are they going to get some Devour Magic here? No, they are not. As they re are retreating back. More t t crazy 2v2 battles. As we're looking at the Ents, well, pretty much just all um, devoured there. As the Destroyers are still flying around the map. Perhaps looking to see where his opponent is trying to mine any gold. Kwai is in serious trouble. Yeah. Kwai is in serious trouble as he pretty much has nothing else going for him. Here he's going to be trying to put in some pressure. He does have somewhat of an army trying to mosey on in here. 29 over 90 supply going up against 50 over 80. So the overall the supplies are fairly, fairly close. Keeper of the Grove does have a staff of preservation, but what can he actually preserve at this point and stage in the game? Kwai now making its way down across here. You can see all of the gold mines save for this one. Um, for the green team is currently b being used up and well in comes some damage here are we going to see a rep there goes a quick quick impale there goes some um, frost novas and well the damage will be added up quickly losing a main expansion here unsummoning this gold mine once more unsummoning up some of these buildings getting every bit of as much as possible as those buildings are still dealing damage back as they are ending up well disappearing there you go, haunted gold mines, and, and all of those buildings are now lost. We're looking at, what is that, uh, maybe, t well, nope, seven gold a second, no mining ha happening here. Seven gold a second compared to zero gold a second. Kwai still does have a little bit of gold in the bank. And what is he going to buy it, uh, uh, buy here as the units are now making their rounds once more? All right, we could have a small engagement. And, well, here comes a big engagement. Unit's going to try and engage. And this is one of the reasons why Raze un uh, Animate Dead is such, well, not useful ability. It's an ultimate ability that right now is off of cooldown and is completely, completely useless. Um, uh, there are no corpses out onto the field. There is another death coil right there trying to save that unit. Are we going to see a little bit of damage there? Yes, we are as, um, well, Lubber now backing away. Um, I'm pretty sure right now that, um, I'm well, the undead was hoping for, well, no, Dark Ritual or Death Pack would have at least denied that little bit of experience, as I believe he does have less, less uh, does have level three Unholy Aura. <laughs> okay. Battles raging on here. Ents making their way off to the north. The game is, well, thank you for the follow. Destroyers are out and about. Where are they going to try and go next? That is the question. Catching an obsidian statue out of position would be a very big deal. G um, or getting a crypt fiend. No, death coil showing up at just the right time there to try and save. So far, units are continuing to back up. Dreadlord shows up onto the battlefield. We are going to perhaps see an infernal fall in from the sky. There goes a crypt fiend. And this is turning into a battle of attrition. Whoever can hold on to their units the longest. I think we should mourn the fact that the Necro Wagon can't be used right now. Yeah, well, yeah, Necro Wagon cannot be used. Um, and well, finally, um, finally, it seems like Kwai 
going after this gold mine that Lubber has been able to mine for quite some time. If this gold mine was actually pressured a lot, lot earlier, well, um, the game could have could have a different outcome. All of that additional gold, I believe, three thousand gold, five minutes of mining has given um, well given Lubber a sixty-eight over seventy supply army compared to fifty-five over eighty. All right. Lich is Frost Nova, not going to be nearly that useful as well. Really wanting to be able to f focus down some of those des uh, destroyers, but the destroyers being magic immune, always being very, very pesky. Is Red really winning this? I, I don't know. It is incredibly close at this stage. 16 over 20 supply, 70 over 70 going up against, I don't even think I can ha click on, oh, there's a Night Elf building, 9 over 10 supply, and 55 over 80. One Moon Well um, going to be providing a little bit of, well, additional uh, mana and hit points for the Keeper of the Grove. Tranquility could be useful as well, but as there is for the Red Army. Being able to have um, a way to heal is incredibly important. Wisp could end up, is it going to detonate? Yes, detonates against the Dreadlord. Dreadlord, however, has double potions of mana. And we are going to see, well, a little bit of creeping and picking up a potion or Tome of Intelligence. Is that going to be the difference here? As the unit's going to try and engage once more. Death Knight actually in a little bit of trouble. As Well, there goes it into a pail. Death Knight could be in trouble. Is he going to get a scroll of town portal? Yes, he does use it in time. And all of those units are now trying to back away. All right, where are the remaining units going to go? One Crypt Fiend is lost. I don't know if any other destroyers were lost right there. But that was an incredibly close battle as Red was able to force a scroll of town portal onto green. We are looking at 16 over 20 supply. How were those units able to back out? Dreadlord still has a scroll of town portal as well. Obsidian statue being brought back to heal up this, um, heal the death knight, being forced to stay back at home. And now we are looking at Eucalyptus or Lubber trying to set up a, the expansion once more. All right, Acolyte making its way off over here. Is it going to be able to haunt a gold mine? No, it is not. It doesn't have any gold to even haunt, to begin to haunt that gold mine. Going after the rogue wizards and these green creep camps, perhaps that will give a, a little bit of gold. Um, it will, but I don't believe it will be enough. Um, nope, not going to not going to be enough as you see this still backing away here dryad making its rounds going to go after the acolytes here meanwhile a little bit of pressure catching one destroyer out of position it gets taken out easily and red is starting to slowly win out on this fight and um, taking down small unit after small unit acolyte here is it going to end up canceling this haunted gold mine i believe it needs to um, otherwise, but nope, we could have a small engagement here as we're getting ready to go and chase after all those units. There goes an Impale followed by an Infernal, and there goes the Keeper of the Grove. Impale followed by Infernal, basically stun locking that Keeper of the Grove. All right, damage adding through. Tranquility would be incredibly helpful right now as all the units are looking to back away. Double a Locust Swarm perhaps being used by multiple sides as units after units are falling. Uh, who is winning out on the battle so far there goes another uh, well death knight could be in a little bit of trouble it's trying to back away and well no there is the gg well played kwai and sdmk leaving the well no sdmk leaving the game kwai not leaving the game as of yet as that one well that one lich got taken down all right we're still fighting here eucalyptus there goes an impale and the red units could end up all getting taken down here all three heroes were lined up there goes one there goes the other and the death knight falls level seven death knight ends up getting taken down and that is the game kwai finally giving the gg thanks for watching thanks for listening a real nail biter between the two um, eucalyptus or lubber really um, grabbing control of the game taking up to level seven on all three of his heroes a beautifully well played match and just um, properly executed scores um, very much close to each other here um, in terms of total score but eucalyptus and getting that extra bit of gold that extra bit of five minutes mining at the very end thanks for watching thanks for listening gotta re recommend that even just for the dk ultimate uh, yeah yeah animate animate dead is actually being useful and but then again it was not useful later on that ultimate ability when your opponent just has destroyers 
you're just like okay and they can't use the ability and on top of that they it animated druids of the claw in druid form right so that in, instead of like the four supply unit that the druid of the claw really is it kind of becomes like this like a grunt right a low hit point grunt both because both sides had had it yeah that's true ultimates ultimately did win the game thanks for watching thanks for listening